it looks very, very simple. Very, very simple, right? Just a dynamic rows report. And when we preview this, what we've got is the ability to control what's going on in the report, and we've set up parameters for different measures that will allow us to change and make some of those uh, make some of those dynamic. Now, if we come over here to our design area, you'll see that in order to do this, we created a couple of parameters. Uh, we have a parameter for uh, changing which hierarchy is going to be displayed on the rows and allowing that drill up and drill down, and we created a parameter for which measure we want to show. Then we came down and looked at the data set that we created, and we created a little bit of MDX. I know this looks like a lot of MDX, but it's just uh, a couple of calculated members that we're using in MDX. And again, if you want code examples off of this, if you go to um, rocks.com, you can check out, you can download the code examples for the recipes book right on there. Uh, and most of this code should be relatively intact. The, the demo from Rocks is completely functional, so if you want to go grab that, it's just going to function slightly differently than ours. So we've basically got uh, our ability to bring back all of our data from our cube. We have to hard code the cube here because it has to be uh, specified, unfortunately, but um, it would be nice if we didn't have to do that. It's just an issue with the MDX, the way we have to code it. We can test our execute, and that looks good. It's bringing our data back. And the, part of the reason that we want to use custom MDX here instead of just writing kind of a blanket select statement is when we get to our cube browser, that report is going to run incredibly fast. Most parameters, when you're doing parameter-based uh, reporting in reporting services are running that parameter MDX query over and over again. So sometimes you'll get, you know, one report that for one parameter will execute 20 different queries in a row, all with slightly different filters. And that's not good. That makes the, that means the user's going to have to wait. It makes it more complicated to develop. So by us being able to return very specific calculated measures that, pr that relate directly back to our parameters, we're able to deliver some really cool functionality and allow people to drill in and drill up. The other thing we did here was put a, uh, a simple expression on the, uh, the format value here um, so that it would show like this. 509,000, 5.9 million, 11 million, 13 million, and let me sort my properties over here. And if we come over here, we can see what that expression looks like. Make that a little bit bigger. And this is just a handy little trick. For those of you who are pretty good at reporting services expressions, this won't be anything new. Um, but for those of you who are, are trying to get into doing some better formatting and some other cool little tricks, uh, this is a really nice way to basically show any number of, of dollar amount or count values without having to worry about how wide uh, your expression column needs to be. So uh, some pretty cool stuff there. The other thing that we did was we added, whoops, not there, we added an action for the row label that self-references the report and just recalls the row member for, the, for our new row as it passes it into the query and the measure that we want to see. And that's what's driving this functionality right here. So as I click, I'm drilling in and down. It's just recalling the same report with a different row member and the same measure that I happen to pass in. And of course, I'm controlling the measure with a drop down here. It's not dynamic. We're going to make that dynamic when we get to the cube browser. But this is just the foundation report for uh, one of the two pieces for what we're going to build in our cube browser. So pay attention. We've got our drill up, our drill down, and our, the ability to pass in what we're going to do here. And the next thing we're going to take a look at is the metadata report. This is one of my favorite things uh, that we're able to do in reporting services, bar none. Um, and you know what? Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. So one of the things that's always a struggle whenever we do uh, analysis services projects with clients is, well, how do we let the clients know you know, what's in the queue, what's available, what they can do. And of course, we have a documenter product that does that, and it's great, and it has all sorts of cool functionality. We're not here to talk about that. But there's a lot of information in analysis services. Uh, you'll notice here I'm connected to analysis services, my local analysis services instance. 
And I, there are all these DMVs that you might have used as a DBA or as a SQL developer that we can go in and query and get schema information about our cube. So we can go in and get what tables and columns and cubes and dimensions and hierarchies and anything we want to know for the most part, um, all the way down to mining structures and KPIs, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, and then of course there's discover statements so we can see what's going on as the system's actually running. But we're really focused on our metadata statements. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use our cube metadata report and we're going to take a look at how we can leverage some of those queries. And what we're going to be able to do is take a simple query that looks like this where we're going to go in and pull, I want to know which dimensions are attached to measure group reseller sales for the cube channel sales. Now we refer to it as a cube but it's really a perspective inside of analysis services. Don't get caught up in that, it just happens to be what they name the column. So if we run this, I can come in here and see, wow, you know, there's a lot of dimensions that are related back to these individual measures. And it gives me the cardinality for them. And again, these are DMVs that are all built into the system. They're not built, um, I'm not worried about, um, uh, you know, having to write custom code to get this data or anything like that. I just have to write simple select statements to pull that data back out of my cube. And it's going to give me all kinds of really good information. So we're going to take that and we're going to build a report that allows me to see my cube, my measure groups, my measures, what dimensions relate to them, um, what hierarchies are available. And in order to do that, make this a little bit wider there, it's going to work like this. So an end user can actually come in here and say, well, I want to see for uh, direct sales I'm concerned about my internet orders. I want to see my internet order count and see what, what kind of data can I get about my internet order count. Well, I can get my customer data, my customer geography data, and I can see by country, state, and province. So an end user can come in here and take a look at these queries that we've put in, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, this is a little bit of a complicated report, so I wanted to kind of show you what you're going to be getting out of it before we started wading through a little bit of code. But at the end of the day, this is going to give your end users a lot of capability to come in here and say, you know, what do they want? What do we want to be able to look at? Different product categories, you know, what kind of levels are we interested in? And they can actually take this and mark it up and screenshot it if they want to and help send it over to help with requirements. And that delivers a huge amount of productivity boost because they're very specifically aware of what they can access quickly and what they're not going to be able to access quickly, what might not be in the cube uh, or might not be in the perspective or view or security mode that, that they might have access to. So in order to do all this, we're basically creating um, a couple of objects here where we're just going to need one column and each one is going to talk to the other one 